So my name is Jane Trowell. Um, I work with Platform, which is a London-based artist activist group that makes work about human rights and environmental issues. We've been invited by Alfini to come here and uh, create a piece of work here. And what we've chosen to do is create an exhibition with invited artist activist groups and to create a season of 50 events in the run-up to the Conference of the Parties on Climate Change, COP15, which is happening in December. Well, I've just arrived at the Alfini with my sapling, which I'm taking to Heather Aykroyd and Dan Harvey's walking forest installation. Um, I've come from London. I walked to the tube, I took the tube, I took the train, I've walked from the train here. And this sapling is actually from uh, just across the road from my flat in Lambeth, uh, near Brixton. And it's on a piece of land that's gonna be built on very shortly, which makes me very sad because on that spot, there are acorn trees, uh, all kinds of really beautiful and quite mature trees um, and also some really fantastic bramble bushes which I pick brambles from each summer so um, I'm really pleased that this has made the journey here and um, we'll have a continued life elsewhere and this, this one this yeah. was our, our <laughs> first tree brought in which I believe is maybe not native to England, it's a sycamore, sycamore but yeah. they're, they're, they're still trees. We, I mean, na nature is, you know, hugely abundant. It just chucks down, you know, hundreds of thousands of acorns, or thousands of acorns and thousands of beech nuts. And a lot of those will just get carried away by insects or birds or by, by creatures. And then a lot might grow under the shadow of the tree and they'll never actually make it to maturity. They won't survive in the, in the, in the long term. And then, you know, a tree will just cast off seeds and suddenly people are trying to plant their asparagus patch and they've got a very nice little oak and they think, right, we don't want that, we'll get, dig that up. And everybody says, oh, I've got these saplings growing yeah. on, in the garden and I actually am digging them up and getting rid of them. So we're, we're looking after the unwanted, you know, the, uh, the tree that's not growing in the right place. <laughs> we're positing this idea that actually these mass-produced everyday objects within 25 years are highly collectible because they just don't exist anymore. So we're effectively in an auction house in 25 years time? Yeah. So the idea is that Adams and Smith are peddling, and they could be very reputable people, or they could be very unreputable people, but they're peddling essentially rubbish that's for very high prices. And the way that we try to use that with Spinwatch is asking Spinwatch to provide the provenance for each of the objects. And so we refer to them in the culture of spin and lobbying. And how things like bottled water and tobacco and cigarettes were allowed to still exist within this late capitalist epoch. Banks would be a terrible thing to lose. The customers actually trusted the banks to look after their money, sometimes all the money they had. And the bank, the bank didn't even trust the customer with a cheap plastic pen. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the Slow Travel Agency. Where would you like to go? One of the, the things we're trying to do is sort of encourage people to have travelling as an experience and a way of going to new places and meeting new people. But um, by doing it a little bit closer to home and um, possibly seeing the journey as more of the holiday than the destination. Hey, my name's John Jordan and I'm from the Laboratory of Insurrectionary Imagination. So for Copenhagen, for the COP15, what we're doing is we're going to build a bike block. The project's called Bike Block, Put the Pleasure Between Your Legs. And uh, we're going to build the prototype here in Bristol. We're going to have a shipping container right down here. Uh, loads of old bikes from all over Bristol are going to be stored there. And then we're going to be working with activists and artists and welders and bike hackers. And they're going to uh, design and uh, build the prototype here. We're then going to go to Copenhagen and the idea was that the Centre for Contemporary Art in Copenhagen had commissioned it to be built there and we would go and build it out of a mountain of bikes because Copenhagen is Bike City and it would go out on the day of civil disobedience which is the 16th of December. Uh, Copenhagen Centre for Contemporary Art uh, rang me yes, last week and basically pulled out. Uh, they said it was practical reasons, uh, it was clearly political reasons which were clearly questions of ethics which for us is actually a question of aesthetics. So uh, they were a city-funded institution and they felt they couldn't break the law. I think it's also interesting that they said they'd been doing political art for 15 years and this, you know, the, project, the exhibition is a political art project. So clearly, you know, 
uh, institutions are prepared to give money to things that are political but are within a very strict framework of what is, is you know, what does that mean? And for us, the lab is like, history changes through disobedience, you know. Uh, everything we take for granted uh, happened because people broke laws and made new ones.